Hello, I am Wonder 001 and this is my review of the Belkin Wemo really long title, uh, see the title or description area. Uh, this is pretty much a Belkin Wemo smart switch. Now, I'm going to start this review off with prefacing that this is actually the older model. Uh, Belkin is discontinuing this particular Wemo switch in favor of a smaller one, and I quite frankly would agree smaller is better. However, there are still places that you can purchase this, and since it's being discontinued, you could probably purchase this on a discount. So if you happen to see this in a store and you're considering it, this is the review for you. So. I'm gonna start off with the price. When I purchased this, I actually got it uh, on an Amazon Lightning deal for 20 bucks. Generally, it was $40. Uh, so if you find it within that price range or less than $20, you're doing pretty good. To start off, the Belkin Wemo smart switch here is 4.5 inches in length, has a width of 2.9 inches and a depth from the thickest part because you do notice it tapers down uh, so thickest part down here to the prongs of 2.9 inches for those that prefer a little more visual here you go next to a pack of cards just to give you a general idea of the size of this so starting off on the front you just obviously have the place where you plug into you have a power indicator, which is also a physical button that you can press should you want to activate whatever you have plugged into this uh, with a button on the device itself as opposed to using either Amazon Echo or the app itself. Uh, we'll get into that a little later. Here you have a Wi-Fi indicator light, which will also blink several different colors when you're setting up. Now, while I'm on the front here, I will say that one of the things that I like about the Belkin Wemo switch here quite a lot. After you connect to Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi light turns itself off after about 30 seconds and the light here, because this little power indicator there, uh, actually turns blue, but only turns blue when the device is on. So if it's off, you don't have like an eerie blue glow just hanging out in the background. So coming around to the side, you do notice it's slightly segmented. That is to help it offset heat. It does get slightly warm, not anything terrible, not crazy to the touch, but it does get a little warm. Uh, back you have your standard three prongs and at the top on the back you have your uh, physical reset button. Now, part of the reason you're doing or considering a smart switch is because you want to do home automation because you want to make your life simpler. So the question is, how simple is it to set up the Belkin Wemo switch here? Why don't we take a look at that? needed to actually be on HAL in order to pick that up. So 
So as you saw, once you kind of get an idea of what you're doing, it's not terribly difficult to set up, which is very beneficial for something like this because you want ease of use. Now, smart switches in general, uh, I had plenty of experience with back in January uh, of this year, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, I got the flu, then my wife got the flu, then I relapsed with the flu. Uh, so we were both sick in bed for weeks, I pretty much almost the entire month of January. And being able to turn our lights on and off as well as turn uh, a fan on and off in our bedroom was very, very helpful. And having uh, switches like this made that possible. Now there's one of two ways that you utilize this particular switch. You, one, can either use it with Amazon Echo devices. And in my case, that is what I have. And realistically, it was really simple to use. Um, on, all you have to do is once you get this set up, which you saw the process for doing that, you just tell your Amazon device to search for devices and it will find this switch on your network and add it to your Amazon Echo. And then you can use the title of whatever you call this in order to actuate. So that was really, really simple to do. Now, the other way to use this is with the application. There's an on off switch. So why don't I show you what the application for this looks like when you first start the Wemo app you're gonna get this green splash screen as it searches for devices. Currently it is checking Foamy, which is my local area network. And there you go, it found all of my devices. I'm gonna zoom in a little more because there's not much that uh, actually happens on this particular screen. And that's both the plus and minus of this. It's the simplicity of the app itself. So here on the main screen, it will list all of your Wemo devices. In this case, I only have one smart plug. And from here, all you can do with this particular device is either turn it on or turn it off. Now, you will see it turns green when it is on, letting you know that it is on, and it is rather quick. Now, that is because I am on my current network. If I was off network and trying to do this, it would take a little more time for that to actually change. Coming up to the top here, you have this refresh button. So if you did have multiple devices, you could tap the refresh button. And if they weren't showing up before, hopefully by clicking the refresh button, they will then show up. If you wanna make changes to a particular Wemo device, you have to click this little pencil icon to edit. Now from here, if you click and hold the three hamburger button, you could reorder any of the devices that you had. Now, if I wanted to change anything to do with this particular smart plug, I have to click the arrow, which then brings me into the editing settings for this particular device. So from here, I can edit the picture. This is the default picture for the Wemo smart plug that I have, but if I click on it, I can take a picture of the device or what it's turning on. I can choose a picture from my photo gallery to represent it. I can reset the photo, or in this case, I'm just gonna cancel because I'm gonna leave it as is. Likewise, if I wanted to change the name, click on the name, and there you can see I can change the name. Now, again, not going to do that, so I'm just gonna cancel out. The other option from here is to reset options. So if I come here, I can clear product info, I can reset the Wi-Fi, or, or, Wi -Fi, or I can erase all content and settings. Now, that's kind of the nuclear option, so I'm not gonna be doing that. If you made any changes here, you can hit save, in this case, I did not, so I'm just gonna hit cancel. Last button at the top is this little sprocket or cog. Clicking on that will bring you into more stuff that's app related, not so much the Wemo plug itself, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway, just so you have a good idea of what the app can do. Here you can enable or disable remote access. Now, if you do not have remote access turned on, you again, will not be able to use this off network. So you'd only be able to use it when connected to your Wi-Fi network. So you wanna turn that on. Settings and about, again, we're gonna come over here and it's just going to show you some of the settings. In this case, I have it remembering my Wi-Fi settings. It's location, app info, hardware info, legal. I'm not gonna bring you through all of them because it's really just basic information, but I want you to see where these things are. So if you have, if this, then that, you can connect your Wemo account to if this then that and have all sorts of fun with that. I do not have IFTT yet. I've been really considering it, so this might be my push to actually do that. Connect to Nest. I do not have a Nest device. I would like a smart thermostat, but don't have one right now. Uh, here, if you wanted to add more Wemo devices, because you did see the setup process, but that was when I first 
started using the app and had only one device. So now that I have the app and an account and I wanna add more devices, I would come here and it would bring me through the process. What do I have? Do I have another smart plug? Do I have a dimmer, etc., etc. I'm just gonna cancel out of that because I do not have another device to set up at this moment. And scrolling down, you have support and feedback. So you have tutorials, Wemo community, support articles, get in touch and rate Wemo. Coming back to the main screen, now you'll notice that it's searching for the devices again. It's gonna do that every time you come to this screen. Now, if you're on the screen and close the app, and here, actually I'll show you. If I close the app and then come back to the app, it doesn't have to do that search because it's still within the memory. Wemo does not push firmware updates from the application itself. So if the app isn't on and there's a firmware update for the plug, it does not push notify you that, hey, there's an update. You have to come into the application itself to see that there is an update. So if you're just using this with Amazon Echo and you never come here, you're never really gonna know that there is a firmware update. So I would recommend on occasion, you know, maybe once a month, just coming into the app and seeing if there's any firmware updates. Because that is one thing that Wemo has been really good about is pushing firmware updates. So. Coming down to the bottom, you will notice that we are currently on devices and that would list out all of your devices. I only have the one right now. If we select rules, this will allow us to set up rules. Now right there, it's looking to see if I had any rules set up. Now by default, you have several selections of rules. You have a schedule. So if I click on schedule, since I only have the one plug, it's just showing me so I can turn on or off living room and when. So if I select and again, Clicking any of these will bring you into more options. Just keep in mind, I only have the one device. So living room, I can turn on or off, on until time, on or off. When do I want this to start? Selecting this will allow me to have it on or off, and then I could start at and tell it a particular time, as well as days of the week that I want. Now, I'm not going to hit done because that will lock in the rule because I'm not actually trying to make a rule, but we can also create a rule name. So I'm gonna go back. We can also do auto off timer. So automatically turn off my particular device, again, because I don't have any other devices, but you select it after the device has been on for one hour or you know starts at one minute and goes up to an hour, or you can select a custom time. So plus or minus however long you'd like it. So let's say you have kids and they, you know, round eight o'clock, they go into the den, they watch TV for an hour or so and they leave and they always leave that light on. Well, doing this will let you turn that light off after a specific, set, a specific amount of time. Or maybe you're kind of giving them a cue, hey, it's time to get out of the room and go to bed. Uh, this is where you would do that. You can say when, all day, or again, just like before, you can select start day on or off, time, time to start, time to turn off, and then days of the week that that particular rule will be in place. And again, uh, you can name this particular rule so you know what it is if you have to go back and edit. Now I'm gonna go back because I'm not saving any rules at this time. There are extra things in here that I do not have access to because I don't have devices that correspond with them, such as long press, uh, which requires to have a Wemo dimmer, motion detecting, which needs a Nest Cam or a Wemo sensor, or uh, Nest Away, which is for the Nest thermostat. Don't have that. You also have Automate, which is right now, if I click on it, we have a rule called Away Mode. So this is kind of like you're setting up lights turn on on this time, lights turn off on this time to mimic you being home. So since I only have the one switch, it's automatically connected. And I can, when, by selecting that, choose, again, Start On. What happens? Does it turn on? Does it turn off? Start off, or sorry, turn off. So start at this time, turn off at this time, and then select days of the week. So again, it will mirror what you, uh, your activities while you're home. And get notified, again, these require specific things. So motion alerts and usage alerts uh, requires a Wemo Insight, don't have that. And this one requires a Wemo sensor or a Net Nest Cam, both of which I do not have. And then again, this cog up in the corner here does exactly what it did on the devices page. So that is a quick, well, not really quick, but that is a look through the Wemo app itself, as well as what you can do with the 
switch. All right, now that you know what the app looks like, let's take a look at actual usage, like in practice, turning it on and off and using uh, Amazon to turn it on and off. Notice how the blue light goes off when the Wemo light switch isn't actually turned on. Now, if you're looking for Amazon Echo integration, after you search, all you have to say is, Alexa, turn on living room. Okay. Alexa, turn off living room. simple as that. So there are several other things that I actually really like about the Belkin switch here. And it is, again, Belkin and their commitment to keeping this up to date. Even though this is a quote unquote discontinued product, just three days ago, I got a firmware update for this. Uh, there was actually even a firmware update right out of the box for the Wemo. And I, I appreciate that because that lets me know that you are buying while you are just buying a switch, you also are having Belkin as the backer of that, and they are committed to keeping their stuff up to date. Now, I'm not sure how long after this is discontinued they'll keep that up, but three days ago, which I know that this has been discontinued probably a little longer than that, I did get an update for the switch. So one of the concerns that I had with uh, getting a smart switch was power consumption, because I'm one of those people who will unplug things to save on vampire power. So the question is, how much does the Belkin smart switch here use? Well, this particular smart switch uses 1.2 watts when idling. So that means that whatever you have plugged into this isn't turned on, it's just this is in the wall connected to your Wi-Fi. So 1.2 watts is not really bad in my opinion for you know what you get to do with something like this. So I have been saying a lot of good things uh, about the Belkin Wemo switch here. There is something that I do not like about it, and that is the fact that it, this particular one does not monitor energy use. And I, and I understand that, but I do have another smart switch. While does not monitor energy usage, I at least know how long the thing was, uh, you know, whatever it was plugged in. So in my case, a fan or something like that, how long that's been on for. I really wish that uh, Belkin's app would do something like that. But I mean, that is a small, small caveat. Uh, all in all, I really like the Wemo switch here. And if you are considering starting home automation, the Belkin here, especially because of its tapered design, uh, is, is a solid buy. So if you happen to find this in a store, again, because they're discontinuing it, you could probably find it cheaper than I mentioned. And this is a good place to start. So. With that said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.